Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Surviving Scientology Radio with your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Today, we're interviewing longtime Scientology critic Mark Bunker. Mark worked down in Clearwater, Florida at the Lisa McPherson Trust in the 1990s and is now running for a seat on the City Council of Clearwater. What we want to talk about, Mark, today is the Tampa Bay Times article of October 20th, 2019, just this past weekend. Written by Tracy McManus, the story is called Clear Takeover, How Scientology Doubled Its Downtown Clearwater Footprint in Three Years. Tracy's story reveals quite a lot of details about how private Scientology parishioners using limited liability corporations purchased an astonishing amount of property in downtown Clearwater, thereby cementing Scientology's control over the destiny of downtown Clearwater. Will downtown Clearwater become economically viable? Will it flourish and prosper, as Scientology likes to say? Or does it become Scientology Monastery, an economic dead end for the citizens of Clearwater? Mark, what did you think when you read Tracy's article over the weekend in the Tampa Bay Times? Well, she did an amazing job. She's been working on this uh, story for quite some time now. And, uh, you know, that's the, the important of print journalists. They have time and they're backed by uh, these newspapers who um, give them all the time and and, uh, and everything that they need to actually do the job right. Um, and the Tampa Bay Times is a spectacular newspaper and Scientology hates it because they have done a great job of covering Scientology's fraud and abuse over the years. In fact, uh, Scientology just put out an issue of their propaganda magazine, Freedom, today that um, is all about um, Clearwater. Uh, it's introducing lots of Scientologists who live here um, and giving them all profiles just to, to humanize the Scientologists. And apparently, uh, also as part of the, the magazine, they, they point out who is the real problem with getting the downtown redeveloped. Turns out, it's the Tampa Bay Times <laughs> and Tracy McManus specifically who they loathe and despise because she's on top of their nonsense. Um, it, it is astonishing to behold. We have a, a problem here in Clearwater with uh, a very dead downtown area. Everyone around us, all the cities nearby, like Dunedin, which is a quaint little uh, town right next to us, they have uh, a very happening downtown area. Lots of restaurants, lots of places to shop and go. And uh, it's it's busy uh, every single night. In Clearwater, yeah, uh, is, it's this, mostly dead. This brings us to the core of the matter, Mark. Downtown Clearwater is a beautiful place beachfront property and correct me if i'm wrong the debate goes back to when david miscavige and the church of scientology wanted to buy that land that was owned by the and the city wound up buying it do you see that as the beginning of this current dispute in which all the land was purchased well i see it all as part of one long continuum but the the uh, the focus of of this particular story that tracy wrote does deal with the fact that uh, in the past three years, from the sale of this piece of land, Scientology has doubled down and uh, doubled their footprint in downtown Clearwater. And what had happened uh, at some point, the um, the aquarium a few years ago was planning to move downtown, which would have been great. It would have really brought uh, people down to the downtown area, and it would have been a positive for everybody, except for Scientology, because Scientology wants to keep it nice and sleepy. So that that fell through, and the uh, the property then uh, had to be sold. Uh, the city wanted to purchase that, to use that as part of developing a beautiful waterfront park as a, um, you know, a great welcoming place to hopefully revive the downtown area. And they have big plans for it. They're, they're planning to spend $65 million in a, 
last ditch attempt to make something happen downtown. Uh, but Scientology wanted to buy that aquarium property for themselves so they could make it part of the Scientology campus and keep people away from downtown. They like it nice and quiet. They don't like people wandering around, uh, possibly prying into what Scientology's up to. So they're happy with the place being dead. Um, so the city decided not to, uh, uh, not to um, sell that piece of uh, land to Scientology. Um, and this infuriated David Miscavige, who had developed his own plans for downtown, saying, hey, listen, if you let me buy that piece of land, I will bring all of the businesses downtown. I'll recruit all the movie chains and restaurant chains and and we'll be in charge of of making this place prosper. Uh, we just need that land. And the city said, no, uh, it's probably best if we uh, develop the, the town ourselves and not put everything in your hands. Everything should not be in <laughs> your control. So no, thank you. And uh, Miss Gavish got really upset and uh, put a ban on uh, Sea Org members buying anything downtown, uh, and business dropped immediately, according to the, the Tampa Bay Times. Um, you know, he, ju he just took it out on, on the few businesses that are open. Um, so then, since then, uh, they have been quietly purchasing, purchasing uh, practically everything that's available to purchase downtown. Uh, whether it's Scientologists themselves or Scientology themselves who are, are opening up their own buildings, which are then basically empty. Uh, they have a, an entire uh, row of front groups um, on Fort Harrison Avenue, including where my old office used to be at the Lisa McPherson Trust. That's now the Way to Happiness building. And... You also have on that strip there um, the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, Scientology's front group attacking psych psychiatry, uh, uh, Criminon. All of these uh, front groups have an office there in what looks like really Main Street USA from Disneyland more than anything else. It, it, there's something cartoonish about it. But if you look inside those buildings, as is usually the case, nothing much is happening in there. They have one person man on the phone, and that's it. You know, they, they um, open up these buildings, but there's nobody to put in most of them. Um, so they, uh, this, uh, the uh, church itself has bought a bunch of properties, and then individual uh, wealthy Scientologists have been quietly buying up properties themselves too and just sitting on these so no one has any idea what scientology or the scientologists plan to do with these businesses they just know that okay now they're owned by this group and they're doing nothing with them what comes next that's the uh yeah, and that's the question that has everyone puzzled right now. Sure, because the um, financial prosperity, the future development, financial well-being of, of downtown Clearwater is at stake. From Tracy McManus's article, quote, the church, its members and companies they control now own 185 properties that cover 101 acres. Mark, this is a phenomenal amount of real estate to purchase in such a short time. It echoes the way that Scientology entered Clearwater in the first place. It does. Yeah. When Hubbard snuck into town back Came in 75. To yeah. They, they uh, used the front group, United Churches, to, uh, to purchase uh, the Fort Harrison Hotel, which was a historic hotel here in, in downtown Clearwater. It was the place to go if you were having a wedding reception uh, or a banquet of any type. Um, this was a vibrant part of the city. Well, Scientology purchased that and an old bank building um, and didn't tell anyone who they were. Uh, and it, it, 
the uh, mayor at the time, Mayor Gabe Casares, was a little uh, curious as to why now on the uh, on the rooftops of the Fort Harrison Hotel, there were security guards with uh, billy clubs and, and mace walking around the place. And he started asking questions, and it took a month or so to uncover that it was actually Scientology. And then the place uh, just <laughs> went into an uproar. Um, and Scientology uh, did everything they could when they snuck into town to take over Clearwater. They had Project Normandy, which was their covert plan to get people into every facet of life here, into the um, into the mayor's office, in, uh, get people into the, the newspaper, uh, get uh, agents everywhere to uh, be following, um, finding out who the friends were and who the enemies were and covertly work to uh, seize control of the city. Uh, and all of these records came out a few years later when the FBI raided Scientology's headquarters in LA and Washington DC and found these detailed plans that were not just put in place here in Clearwater, but against the, uh, the federal government as well. Scientologists were bugging the IRS and listening to their tax exempt status meetings. They were stealing documents every night from all of these different agencies for years. Uh, so when when this was uncovered and the top uh, 10 leaders of Scientology, including L. Ron Hubbard's wife, went to prison for Operation Snow White, the much broader uh, anti-government project, um, the people in Clearwater were really up in arms. And they tried to fight back. They did what they could. They had uh, a week's worth of hearings in 1982 where they brought in uh, an attorney, Michael Flynn, who was uh, handling some class action lawsuits for, for former Scientologists. And they had people like Paulette Cooper, uh, the author of the one of the first books negative about Scientology, the scandal of Scientology. Uh, she came in to talk uh, as well as L. Ron Hubbard's uh, son, L. Ron Hubbard Jr or Ron DeWolf, He's, he changed his name to that. So he didn't want to be tarnished with uh, dear old dad's name. Uh, and, and so the city sat glued uh, to their TVs for a week watching the live testimony. Yeah, I, I've watched uh, all, the, all the videos on YouTube. You, you have them archived on your uh, YouTube channel. And yeah. they're enormously valuable to see, first of all, what they tell me is that the Church of Scientology has never had Clearwater's best interest in mind. Scientology has, has always and only had its own best interest in mind. What was the fallout of the hearing? Happened in the relationship between the city and the church? Did it get worse? Well, the city decided to, to craft a law that would require um, the organizations, uh, re religious and charitable, oh, charitable organizations apparently, to report all of their income. And Scientology took that to court and they, they sued the city and they won. So uh, the city wound up paying a million dollars to the Church of Scientology uh, from, that, from that lawsuit. So that kind of stopped um, the will to fight, understandably so. Uh, Scientology was very effective and has been very effective over the decades using the courts to destroy people. The revelations that Tracy McMahon has broken her story, have these changed the tenor and the urgency and the focus of your candidacy for city council in Clearwater? Well, it brings into sharper focus why it's important to have somebody on the city council that understands Scientology and understands the way they work. One thing that, that has happened um, uh, with uh, uh, with this uh, newspaper article, Tracy McManus did try to get comments from the mayor and from all the city council members um, about this situation that we're in. And most of the uh, city council people were troubled by it to varying degrees, except for Dr. Bob Cundiff, who uh, <laughs> 
thought, well, this is no different than like when Walt Disney was buying up property in Orlando, then and, and then suddenly, boom, you had Disney World pop up. No, no, it's not like that at all, Bob. Bob has been one of the uh, more uh, more likely individuals on the council to defend Scientology um, over the years. Um, so he's going to have a particularly rough race this time, I believe. Uh, I'm not going up against him. I'm going for seat two. He's in seat three. But there are other challengers who will be taking him on. And if he's going to be easy on Scientology at a point like this, um, I don't think he has a chance of getting reelected to the council. It's, uh, it's very interesting. The day that I filed my papers to officially run uh, for the city council. The Tampa Bay Times had a huge front page story then about the latest lawsuit, the civil lawsuit that was filed that detailed uh, criminal activity here in Clearwater, including sexual abuse of an underage girl at both a Scientology school and here at the, you know, the org, the Scientology buildings, and how Scientology covered up these crimes. All sorts of fraud and abuse are, are detailed in this civil suit. So that hit the day that I announced I'm running. You know, it couldn't have been a, a finer example of why I believe it's important for me to be uh, on the on the council, why we need somebody who understands and is not afraid to say the word Scientology. And then we have this. Uh, so Scientology has a unique way to always be newsworthy. Um, and I, I think we have to stop turning a blind eye to it. There's been like three different phases of the city's reaction to Scientology. From like 75 to, to uh, 95, the city uh, investigated them, fought back against Scientology, kept them at arm's length. And then in the late 90s, a new city manager was hired from Miami. Uh, his name was Mike Roberto. And it was his goal to um, make peace with Scientology. And he tried very hard to keep Scientology off the front pages of the paper so they could just get on with trying to develop downtown. And uh, shh, shh, don't mention Scientology, okay? We'll, we'll ignore them. Yeah. Everything will be fine. Um, well, then, uh, then I moved here with Bob Minton and Stacy Brooks when they opened up the uh, Lisa McPherson Trust. And Roberto was furious that suddenly we got Scientology back on the uh, front pages of the paper again. In fact, I I just was reading an article from our opening uh, of the LMT back in 2000, and there was a um, there was a, a something that Stacy Brooks had mentioned in a post that I'd forgotten completely about. As I knew that Stacy and Bob had gone in to meet with Mike Roberto early on when we came here, and Roberto told them, listen, you know, we don't want it, this on the front pages, uh, so we're not happy about you being here. But I didn't realize um, there's a, a restaurant uh, a couple doors away from us, uh, Octavio's, really great Italian restaurant. We used to eat there all the time. And on uh, the day that we signed the contract and bought uh, the building that uh, became the LMT, we had a little ceremony and the restaurant sent over a bottle of wine and some bruschetta as a welcome gift. And the uh, Tampa Bay Times, then the St. Petersburg Times, mentioned that in the newspaper story. Didn't say the name of the restaurant, but they, they said the uh, restaurant delivered this. And Scientology actually went to the restaurant and asked, were you the people who did this? Did you send them the, uh, 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 the wine? 
And they said, yeah, we did. You know, it's nice to see them here. Uh, and Scientology, uh, you know, was just detailing how evil we were and how we were all criminals and they shouldn't trust us. And all the dead agent material that Scientology spews against anyone who speaks out against Scientology. So that I, that I was aware of, but I'd forgotten in the post that Stacy made about this that Mike Roberto, the city manager, also went to the restaurant and said, we're nothing but trouble and advised the restaurant not to have anything to do with us. So this was a shocking reality that, that we faced once we moved to town. Um, the people in uh, the people, the citizens were happy to see us, not so much the people in government. They wanted uh, nothing more than to please keep Scientology uh, out of the headlines. Um, and then when the uh, Lisa McPherson Trust closed after uh, two years uh, of being here, after we left town, um, then Scientology entered a new phase where they hired uh, a top Republican uh, a, a lobbyist, Mary Repper, and she made it uh, safe for Republicans to go and have fundraisers at the Fort Harrison Hotel. And, and that became now uh, pretty much an accepted part of Clearwater. Um, the, the local politicians will go and campaign there at the Fort Harrison. They'll go accept Scientology's money. And uh, I, I think that's rather sad. And Scientology has made great inroads uh, in um, offering their facilities free of charge to any local group that would like to stage an event. So it's not uncommon now for charities to be hosting their events uh, in the, the Crystal Ballroom there at the Fort Harrison Hotel. And I, you know, I've talked to some folks who have actually taken their groups uh, to that, and they, they make a, an, you know, a really amazing offer that is hard to refuse. Scientology says, host your event here, We'll pay for everything. We'll provide all the food. We'll do everything for you. And you got a small group like the local garden club. You know, how can they pass that up? Um, sure. But it, it comes at a price because what they, why they're doing it is to safe point Scientology. They want to get pictures of all the uh, city uh, movers and shakers. Uh, they're at the org. They want to be able to put it in their glossy magazines. They want to show how much the city loves Scientology. And so the politicians and these groups are, are just being used. That's not to say that the individual Scientologists in town are, are bad people. Not at all. There are people who I'm sure are absolutely wonderful and well-meaning. But everything the organization does is for a reason it's to safe point scientology yeah absolutely that's the essence of the charm campaign mark, mark shifting topics a little bit there was a, about a 15-year period that, that many uh perhaps newer residents uh, of clearwater don't understand i'd like you to get your thoughts on this was the flag building they spent 15 years building a building that a non-scientology contractor could have up in 12 to 18 months. Why did Scientology spend 15 years? What fights did the city of Clearwater have to have to get them that building? I mean, you'd have to ask Scientology themselves why it, why it took them so long to do it. Our theory was always, well, it, once it gets finished, they can't uh, continue fundraising on the construction of the building. So that's why we theorized it, it took years and years and years. What the city did, though, they were tired of this uh, empty shell of a building half open to, you know, the elements. Uh, and they did start to fine Scientology for not getting the work done. And I think the, the church chalked up uh, like a half a million dollars worth of fines before they 
they finally finished it. And of course, Scientology does what they always do. They contested those fines and paid a fraction of what they should have paid. But um, yeah, Scientology doesn't care what laws the city enacts. They don't care what uh, rules the city wants them to live by. Scientology is going to do what they want to do. The city says, don't cut down that tree. So they cut down the tree. There are sign ordinances in, in town that are very important. You can't have a gigantic Scientology symbol uh, covering the entire top of a tent that's covering a square block for a Scientology event. You have to take that down. And Scientology said, no, we're happy with it. Go ahead and find us. Uh, we're doing things our way. The city keeps trying to work with Scientology. Scientology is not interested in that. Scientology is interested in getting done what Scientology needs to get done and thinks of the city uh, uh, as a, a nuisance, the uh, the politicians here just as a nuisance. Some, th some people that can be uh, cajoled uh, or either bribed or threatened uh, to do things Scientology's ways. I, I would have to think that uh, investors and business people are going to sit back and say, you know, I'm going to wait for this thing to crater, or I'm just going to, I'm just going to invest elsewhere. Is that one of your concerns as a well, resident yeah, of Clearwater? That has definitely uh, been what's uh, kept the uh, downtown uh, dead for decades now. People uh, don't want to uh, bring their business downtown. It is kind of creepy. Um, now, a lot of folks in in Clearwater say even if the town is downtown is really beautifully developed, they don't want to come down there. So we've got this struggle to begin with that all all cities have had problems with uh, downtowns dying uh, over the years. Uh, uh, malls came around and then. Everybody went to the malls, so the downtown became dead. Um, other communities have been able to bounce back um, by making by making it so enticing to create a business down there and making it so much fun for people to come downtown that, yeah, it becomes a destination. We bypass that entirely in Clearwater. We go over the bridge and we go to Clearwater Beach. That's where all the life is. It's the number one beach mm -hmm. in the country. So that ha that is incredibly prosperous, uh, unbelievably successful. Downtown cannot get a break. And it's largely due to the presence of Scientology. Now, if Scientologists, if these, um, if these Scientologists who own the buildings, become terrific landlords and just lease out the buildings as any landlord would to businesses and let those businesses thrive, well, then the downtown can be a success. There are already uh, examples of that happening with uh, um, one of the, one of the uh, Scientologists uh, detailed in this article in the Tampa Bay Times uh, is uh, Moises Ogami, um, and Ogami uh, has a building right now where a very successful restaurant is running, Clear Sky. Um, it's it's a great restaurant. I highly recommend everyone go and and check it out. The food is great. It's a wonderful atmosphere, and it's and it's successful. So, uh, you know, a partnership like that is fine. Okay, so it's a Scientologist owns the building. As long as they're not, um, you know, causing any problems for the people uh, running the place, that's fine. Uh, but there's also other stories about people who run afoul of Scientology. I was talking with somebody the other day who's, uh, they're the last non-Scientologist in in one building that Scientology purchased, and they, um, a couple of the employees had been passing around these little um, 
cards, these, uh, these business cards for the Aftermath Foundation. Uh, which say helping people leave Scientology. Call this number, and there's a phone number and uh, and uh, some email addresses on here. So if a Scientologist stumbles upon one of these and is having some doubts and wants some help getting out, well, they may stumble upon one of these business cards somewhere planted around downtown. Well, so so employees at this uh, non Scientology business were were caught um, putting some of those cards out and Scientology went in there and talked to their human resources department and and chewed out the business um, and uh, they uh, the lease is up so they're not going to be allowed to stay um, hmm. so if if Scientology is upset with you for some reason things can go bad and and that's the absolutely that's the tricky yeah. that's the tr tricky oh. aspect you know it, it, in in Scientology terms keeping Scientology is the most important part of the organization for individual Scientologists that's that's what they live and breathe so if something is going to mess with Scientology in any way, they got to try to crush it. This is th this is why the future is so hard to chart for uh, for Clearwater. Business cannot function in an area where there's capriciousness. You won't go there. You'll just stay away. Tom Devoct, uh, former Scientology executive, said that Miscavige wants it this way. That he wants people to get out. And I tend to agree with Tom Devoct because Scientology has always been about privacy keeping people out. Scientology surrounds the perimeter of these buildings with cameras, but just the harassment factor, the unfriendliness, the lack of welcoming, tells you that you don't want to set up shop there if you're a business. The idea that Miscavige has the power to financially harm downtown Clearwater by just playing takeaway. I'll take all your land and I won't let you develop it and you can go away and it'll just die on the vine. Miscavige doesn't care because he doesn't have to turn a profit. He doesn't have to make any money. That's why you have all these empty ideal orgs that have yet to open that are, are just rotting, and whether they're in whether they're in Plymouth, England, or, or anywhere else. He doesn't have to make any money. He doesn't have to do anything. These individual Scientologists who purchase these properties can donate them back to the church, and the church will own them, and that's not illegal either. So Miscavige effectively gets the security perimeter around his big cash, which is flag land base. And then what happens when he establishes the security perimeter is downtown Clearwater, what's its fate when Scientology effectively controls it, Mark? Well, uh, I can't really see uh, prosperity around the corner. And we have to consider whether we really want to spend the $65 million that the city has been planning to put into the uh, beautiful park on our waterfront that was supposed to be mm. the the entry the way the the gate to uh, downtown development. Uh, I'm afraid that we'll spend that money and we're still going to wind up with the same dead downtown. Just like years ago, they thought, well, what we need to do, we need to build a convention center that will draw so many people down here. It would be a great success. Mm. And of course, they built a convention center and it it, it was a, a total, complete failure. And we just tore that down a few months ago to make way for the beautiful new park that's going to be the new hope for salvation. So when you, you, see, um, you see this series of stories now from Tracy McManus in the, in the paper, um, it really has to make you rethink the commitment uh, perhaps we should find a new spot for downtown to be maybe we should uh, give up and let Scientology have their campus I don't I don't know that I um, support that but I understand uh, that <laughs> that is a uh, an easy call to make what I'd like to see happen is we need to see uh, that tax exempt status revoked. 
then uh, we'll have well, yeah, certainly that's that's the larger picture. Yeah, if we if we can uh, see that come to fruition, uh, and that's not something that I can do as a, a city council member, but if we um, continue to ex explain to the citizens why um, complaining to the IRS about Scientology's fraud and abuse, about why they don't deserve that tax, if we if if we drum up enough support. And especially with the the um, evidence that's going to be coming out from these civil lawsuits that are now being filed about criminal activity inside the Scientology buildings, um, we may possibly be able to strip them of the tax exempt status, and then there'll be a cash cow for the city, and then the city can actually really redevelop the place. That's uh, that's our only salvation is. Uh, a future where Scientology goes back to paying their taxes. Yes, and this is why it's so important, why elections are so important. It's so important for Clearwater to get out the vote, put you and people like you in office who know how to deal with this monster. I wouldn't want it for my town, where you just cut your losses and seed valuable part of town to a malicious organization. That's why you have to get out the vote. Now, the other matters on my, my blog, the Scientology Money Project, I, I've been, my sole focus has been to get the IRS to revoke Scientology's tax exemption. That may not be as straightforward as it appears. It, it may come through, I suspect, criminal action. The tension within Scientology, its own greed, its own self-destructive behavior, and its own aggression against good people of a place like Clearwater, you know, that, that builds. And they glad, Mark, that you're standing up and running for public office thank you i'm glad too this Good is thoughts. um this is a, a very exciting venture that i'm on here um and I, I i think we have a a pretty good chance of winning i do too i just have a good feeling about it well mark thank you so much for taking an hour of your value when do people vote it's actually going to be on march 17th of next year uh they'll be voting in the primaries for uh, the presidential election. But during the primary, on primary day, you'll also be voting uh, directly for the mayor and two new council members. So March 17th, which will also be St. Patrick's Day. So cele uh, celebrate after you vote, okay? Uh, you wanna go, yes. you wanna go cast your vote to get me in office and then enjoy St. Patty's Day. Mark, how can people donate to your camp? How can they help you? Oh, you can go to my website, markbunker.com, and there's a big old donate button right there. And uh, we greatly, greatly appreciate your support. We've got uh, lots of uh, expenses um, every month now where we've found a campaign manager, um, a paid professional that uh, that we need to, to cover. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, all sorts of flyers and brochures and banners and all this type of stuff in production as well. Uh, so we got the machine um, operating now. Uh, so your donations will make a big difference. We look forward to talking to you again between now and election day. It'll be very exciting to watch you out on the campaign trail. For Surviving Scientology Radio, this is your host, Jeffrey Augustine. Thank you so much for listening. As, as always, we'll be in very good touch.